Hello, um, today we're looking at um, equations of quadratic type, um, equations that aren't exactly or maybe quadratic, um, but there's a nice neat way to solve them. Um, we'll do this by considering a few examples and then seeing what the answer is. So let's say I have this equation right here, say um, 3x plus 5 squared um, minus 3x plus 5 um, minus 12 is equal to 0. Now to solve this equation, you could simply foil out the parentheses right here, and then scoop like terms, and then refactor and solve, but it happens to be a shortcut that can take you to the answer. And that shortcut is, what you want to do is you want to imagine that the 3x plus 5 is a single variable i.e. instead of writing 3x plus 5, just write a variable, say m. So what we're doing right here is we're using our imagination, which you can do in math by the way, and we're simply saying to ourselves, I won't write 3x plus 5 down for now, I would simply write something to take its place. And in this case right here, I'll use the letter m. And so then this can be simple as, so what I'll say is let m represent 3x plus 5. And so my equation will become m squared minus m minus 12 is equal to 0. This greatly simplifies the problem and allows us to solve it very much faster or very quickly as opposed to trying to foil this whole thing out and then refactor. And also when you foil this thing out, you get some huge numbers. Um, 3x squared gives you a 9x squared already. So anyways, the m equation here factors into... Um, m minus 4 times m plus 3 again after using your favorite factoring method and after doing so I can then go ahead and solve for m and so using the opposite sign m equals 4 and then m equals uh, negative 3 now this is the catch right here the question was saying the question is saying that the question is saying that m is 4 but they asked about x and so now what I'm going to do right here is that instead of writing an M, I'm going to replace this M with what M is equal to. M is actually the 3x plus 5. And so I will have a 3x plus 5 right here. Because remember, M was equal to 3x plus 5. And in doing so right here, I now have an equation that I can solve. I do the same thing on the other side. Let me give myself some room. Oh, give myself some room right here. And so this m will change out to become a 3x plus 5. And then I solve my basic equation. So I retract 5, subtract 5. And so 3x is equal to negative 1. And divide by 3, so x equals negative 1 third. Similarly over here, subtract 5, subtract 5. So 3x equals negative 8, and so x equals negative 8 thirds. And so by doing the substitute, m equals 3x plus 5, and then simplifying from there, you get an equation right here. <coughs> now, a second example, or second type of equation that we must consider is what we call an equation of quadratic type. It is not actually a quadratic equation, but it kind of looks like one. And so we can use the same kind of methodology to solve that we have before. Consider this right here. x to the fourth minus 5x squared plus 4 is equal to 0 right here. How many terms do you see? 1, 2, 3. I can identify A. A is 1. I can identify a B. B is a negative 5. And I can identify a C. 4. So this equation is not quadratic because of the 4, but it kind of looks like it's a quadratic. So the question is, can I find a middle ground? Is there a way I can solve this equation by using quadratic techniques? And the answer is yes. What we can do is what we, can, we can lower the power, we can change the power of the equation. If I look at these two powers right here, I'll notice a crucial point right here. If I take 2 and I double it, I multiply by 2, I will get 4. Whenever we have this relationship between the powers, this is an equation of quadratic type. 
you know, I'll show you another example where you have this happening. Whenever we have this happening right here, our equation of quadratic type, the first one that needs to be doubled to get the other one, we let m represent that value. So let m be equal to x squared. That has an important caveat. If m is equal to x squared, if m is equal to x squared, then if I square both sides, I will get that m is equal to, you multiply these together, x to the fourth power, oh sorry, m squared is equal to x to the fourth power. So by just doing this, this is automatically true. Notice right here that I had to square both sides, this ends up doubling. 2 times 2 is 4, and then I can do my substitutions. Instead of writing x to the fourth power, I can write m squared. Instead of writing x squared, I can write m. And now I have lowered the powers. This is now an equation of quadratic type. Now I can solve. So factoring, this right here is m minus 1 times m minus 4 equals 0. And so then I will get that m is 1, and I'll get that m is 4. But again, just like before, m is actually equal to x squared. And so the x squared is going to take the place of the m right here. Let me um, make some space for the x squared. And so your x squared right here comes in. And so what I get is x squared equals 1. And similarly, x squared comes in right here. And this right here is one of the most important steps right here. After you solve for m, you're not done. You need to go back and then replace that m with the variable m took a hold of. Then I solve square root, square root. So x equals, again, we want the complete solution. So we take both roots. So it's plus or minus 1, square root, square root. So x is equal to plus or minus 2. We get 1, 2, 3, 4 answers. And we had an x to the fourth, and that fits in with our fundamental theorem of algebra. It states that the order or the degree of the polynomial gives us the maximum number of solutions. So it's a fourth degree, so we can only find up to four solutions. We could find less than four, but we can find up to four solutions. Um, another example. Um, let's say we have x to the 6 um, plus 7x cubed um, plus 12 is equal to 0. And again, we have this doubling effect. If I 3 doubles, is 6. And because of that, I know that my m will be equal to x to the 3rd power. Again, if I take x is equal to x to the 3rd power and I square both sides, I will get that m squared is equal, again, 3 times 2 is 6. It's getting doubled. It's getting doubled. And so my m squared replaces the x to the 6. And the x cubed is just m. And now I have an equation of quadratic type that I can solve. Um, does this factor? I believe it does. Um, 4 and 3. Mm -hmm. So that's m plus 4, m plus 3 is equal to 0. So m equals negative 4, and m equals negative 3. Again, I'm not finished. I replace the m with the original variable, x to the third power. So x to the third is equal to negative 4 m is equal to, oh, not m, x cubed is equal to um, negative 3. And then I take the third root on both sides. So I get that x is equal to negative third root of 4, and x is equal to negative third root of 3.
three. Um, the third root does not produce plus or minus solutions. And since we're only taking the real solutions, um, these right here will be our only two solutions to the equation. One more example that looks a little weird um, th that might help you out a little bit is let's say I have this right here x to the two thirds power um, plus 9x to the one third power um, plus 20 is equal to 0. By the way, a side note x to the two-thirds power is the cube root of x squared, but we'll get to that a little bit later. But again though, if you look carefully, what is one-third doubled? One-third doubled is two-thirds. And so I have that dynamic. Again, I have three terms, one, two, three. And so this is a quadratic. And because it's a quadratic, I will let m equals um, x to the one third, then m squared would be equal to x to the two thirds, and with that being here, this is m squared, 9m plus 20 equals zero, and then I can solve my equation. And so this factor is, I think, in five and four, m plus five times m plus four is zero, so m equals negative 5 and m equals negative 4. Of course, I replace my m. So I have x to the 1 third power is equal to negative 5. x to the 1 third power is equal to negative 4. This is where the tricky part comes in. Well, what am I supposed to do with that 1 third? Well, the trick is to get rid of the 1 third, you raise both sides to the 3 power because one-third times three is one. Raise both sides to the one-third power. Raise both sides to the, to the third power, sorry. And so this simplifies to just x, and that's negative 125, this simplifies to x, and that's equal to negative 64. And that right there are your solutions.